Okay, so once you finished the script, you had a script that you were pretty happy with. Um, what were those next steps? You gave it to your manager. Did he get it out? Did you have some contacts at producers? Um, what was those next steps to actually getting this thing optioned and produced? Sure. The, 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 uh, the, I, this is before, so everyone should know about Willie's Wonderland. This is before I had any um, ha help as far as managers, agents, any of that kind of stuff. So Willie's Wonderland, I was unrepresented. I had nobody helping me out like that. So what do you do in that situation? In that situation, you try everything you can to get noticed. So I would send the script out to as many people as I could just, just or not the script, but I'd send that log line out. Hey, I have a great idea. Would you like to read it? And I, I was doing it like a telemarketer would do, just find finding agents that I thought uh, or, or producers that I thought worked in that space and sent them. Um, I sent them two things, actually, the long line. And then I had made a short film uh, that I had raised a little bit of money for. And I thought that was a great idea because people could just click instead of like reading the stuff, they could just click a button and they could see me beating up a bear for 30 seconds. And that could like hopefully intrigue them. Well, I sent that out to as many people in the space as I could, probably hundreds one lady got back to me. Her name was uh, uh, Kaylee Marsh, and she runs uh, The Blood List, which is like best unproduced horror scripts. And she really liked the idea and she or the, the, the video. So she had me send her the script. She read the script, really liked it, put it on her website as a fresh blood select. And then I started sending that out, just a, the, a link to her website, because it gave the script a little credence that it didn't have before. And what happened was a casting director friend of mine that I had met through acting again, she um, saw that I put it up and she requested me to send her the script. Her name's Venus Kanani. She read the script and she was like, hey, um, I think you could really have something special here if you got a lead actor attached, somebody of some sort of, sort of consequence. And I said, well, who do you think? And she's like, Nicholas Cage would be great. I know his manager. I'll reach out. So this was a, a relationship with Venus that I had developed over years. So she, you know, number, it wasn't just a stranger I met. She trusted me. She knew, you know, she trusted me enough and saw how hard, hard I was working that she was willing to stick her neck out for me. So she's the one that gave it to um, Mike Nylon, who is Nicholas Cage's manager. He's the one that read it, saw the promise in it and gave it to Nicholas Cage. Like he read it on a Friday, gave it to Nicholas Cage Friday night. Nicholas Cage got back and said he wanted to do the movie on Monday morning. It's awesome. Yeah, that is fantastic um, to have that. And then what did, what was it like once you got him attached? Um, what sort of doors did that open and what were those next steps then getting the producer on and that sort of stuff? When we had Nicholas Cage and we had a producer and we had a director on board, the producer um, I had met through friends that I knew in my acting class. So this is an, another thing that I'm saying. I met the producer of Louis Wonderland through a lady that I knew in my acting class. Like she knew that I, like I was putting this project together. So she recommended her husband and her husband knew the director, Kevin, through a project that they had done like 18 years ago. And so it, it is this connections thing of people that you know and you meet. And we talked about this earlier in the podcast. It's like it's amazing how those connections come in handy. And so then it was a matter of finding financing for the film because just because you have Nicolas Cage attached doesn't necessarily mean your movie's going to get made automatically. You still have to find people that are willing to finance the movie. So we had to go to a bunch of different sales agents and try and find somebody that would uh, sell the different territories uh, overseas. And what I'll say is in that process, it was it's very trying. You know, you, there, there are people that are going to read your script even with Nicolas Cage board and say, like, oh, this doesn't work. You have to change this or this doesn't work. You have to change that. And he was a guardian of the script as a producer. He was very much a guardian of it. And I think that I was very lucky in that he was able to protect me as a first time screenwriter and say, hey, this is the way it's written. This is the way I want to do it. If you guys don't want to do it that way, I understand. But we're going to find somebody who wants to do it our way. That was fantastic. And so, yeah, what, what we were able to do is um, – uh, find a sales agency that was going to work, find a, a distributor that was going to work. And this took some time, but we were able to do it. And then what we did was we sold the rights to different places overseas to sell the movie, get to get enough financing. We also had uh, Chicken Soup for the Soul. Their division screen media came in to distribute the movie and Landmark Entertainment to, to, to produce the movie. Thanks for checking out this clip from the Selling Your Screenplay podcast. If you'd like to hear the full interview, just go to sellingyourscreenplay.com slash podcasts. Or to go directly to the episode, just use the link in the show notes. Thanks for watching.